We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Prepare yourself. Okay, let's go. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. And this ain't a three. AM by Mr. Mike Whiteside. How are you, Mike? I'm doing fantastic, Stephen. How are you doing? I have no complaints, and I want to start off by giving a shout out to my friend Oliver Dunn out there in the UK. Mr. Ali the Chalk, he made and actually sent me incredible chocolates that you cannot get here in the, U- in the US. Um, the chocolates are clean, they're fantastic. I Gave him a huge order to send out. So uh, if anyone wants clean chocolate, that's something you can't get here in the States. Ollie the Chalk, W-W-W-O-L-I-C-H-O-C-K. And I'm going to double check on that real quick because I should know it by heart. Yes, OllieTheChalk.com, O-L-I-T-H-E-C-H-O-C.com. Chocolate, chocolate, all chocolate lovers. Get on over to OllieTheChalk.com and get yourself lots of purchases, especially for the holidays coming up. So, Mike. Well, you're making me hungry there. (laughs) (laughs) I literally had a uh, white chocolate. I have no idea what was on top of it. He has all these intricate flavors. And once again, stuff you can't get here in the U.S. And I don't know what um, a lot of the major companies who make chocolates that we're very very familiar with but they don't taste the way they used to but you know the farming is a lot different in in uh the uk and other countries than here Uh, and uh yeah they're unbelievable unbelievable awesome i might have to try them out myself i'm not gonna lie (laughs) please do i'll say the information Sounds great. So bring us up to speed. There's a lot going on with you. I mean, a lot. Yeah, there is a ton. I would first like to say thank you for having me on your platform. It's uh, it's kind of been very serendipitous how you and I actually connected. So I'm super grateful for kind of how this has all transpired and being able to, you know, share my story uh, on your platform today. But um, yeah, um, I released a single um, just the other month called 3M, which you just heard playing there. And the feedback has been phenomenal, um, to say the least, and it's just growing from here. So I, I really have no complaints. Um, still very much excited about 3AM and where that's heading because more and more people are starting to hear it and, uh, you know, it's starting to get out there. Um, and I'm just going to continue to push it. So, yeah, there's safe to say there's a lot going on. Well, there's more of a story than that. You gave us the quick version there. (laughs) I gave you the Coles notes, right? Yeah. (laughs) um, Where should I start? Should I start from the beginning? Well, you're also in acting. Yes, correct. That's another component that helps. Yeah. So it's it's kind of been a whirlwind, but uh, initially how it did start was um, I was in financial planning of all things. Very much different, you know, when you're, a musician and an artist and acting, it's very creative, whereas financial planning is an art form in itself as well, um, but very much a different career path. And I had gone to university, uh, studied business, uh, got my honors degree, and had started my life as a financial planner. Um, it's safe to say I'm extremely grateful now that that path has changed and brought me back to the artistic side of things. And kind of how it all started was really, I started working out a ton. I had gone through a breakup and as anybody 
uh, you know, would you want to get in good shape after, uh, you know, you break up, you have some more free time on your hands. So I just started working out a lot, got back to my passions of music. And a, um, a friend of mine, his brother actually used to manage models more on the, he managed more on the female side. Um, but he said, dude, you know what? You are getting in sick shape. He goes, why don't you get some headshots done? And just, you know, toss them out to a bunch of different agencies and see what comes back. And I, it, it kind of, I know it sounds super simple like that, but there's a lot more, um, work that went on behind the scenes in terms of working out and eating right. And it does take a while. It's not just overnight. Um, But once I threw the photos out there and sent them to a ton of different agencies, I started hearing a lot back and, um, you know, kind of through a chance encounter, I was at a um, I was at an actual audition. And the guy that I went into the audition with just said, you know, who are you represented by? And I said, you know what, I've been talking to a bunch of different agencies, but I you know, haven't settled on one. He said, you know what, check out my agent here. He's a little boutique firm in Toronto. Um, super personable, really looks out for all of his uh, talent. So I had talked to my now manager um, here in Toronto and he had said, you know, I really like your look and I'd love to see where this conversation could go. So it, it truthfully started out with a conversation. Uh, but what it's led to is, you know, a really good relationship with him and now starting to book more gigs as, you know, certain restrictions with COVID. I'm sure everybody you talk to, a lot of things that we had in the plans originally very quickly changed. But um, with restrictions starting to ease up a bit and more precautions being taken, we're starting to see, you know, certain roles pick up again. And I think even the first time that you and I talked, Stephen, I was actually on set. Um, So that was a lot of fun, kind of how we met and and how this acting has all transpired and modeling and stuff like that. We did. I remember you were like in a hallway or something. Yeah, I think I was going through wardrobe and I... I thought I had more time, but then the scene got pushed up. So I said, I'm really sorry about this, but I have to go. I will call you back. <laughs> and luckily I had a nice long drive ahead of me. So we were able to have a, a nice in-depth conversation. And what I love the most is the information you sent over to me. And here's what Mike sent. It all started with a haircut, a table saw, and a breakup. <laughs> It could be, you know, a quirky plot to a, another hit single. I don't know. <laughs> it's a great headliner. It's a great, you know, media piece to start off with. So I, I don't think I'm normal, right? So I, I think that I'm always going to be authentically me. Yeah. And I think I wouldn't tell my story any other way. I think that a lot of times uh, we try to cater to different people's personalities. And I think for me, I'm always going to be myself. And, you know, that's the truth. That's what, that's how it started. It, um, how I got back into music was I went through a breakup. Um, I had originally started a little bit of a duo before going out as a solo artist. Um, and he was off work due to a table saw incident. He was cutting my hair cause he did hair on the side. So mm-hmm. it's as real as it gets. And as funny as it sounds. And once again, just the way that started out of just, a, a nice introduction of instead of being like, Hey guys, it's me. It's like, no, he, here's what's going on. You know, here's what's really happening in my life. Uh, it's not what you expected the moment you started reading anything about me at all. So I love sure. it. It can even be made into a book. It sounds good. Maybe it will. That might be the title. <laughs> <laughs> um, any projects that you're working on right now, or is the pandemic, Uh, affecting you in Canada or how is it affecting you in Canada right now? Well, I'll put it this way. Um, It's obviously affecting everybody, but I've really used it as somewhat of a blessing in disguise. Um, And I'll say it very tongue in cheek, but what I've been doing over this entire pandemic is getting a lot of really good music together. Cause I think at the core of everything is if you don't have good music, then there's no real product there. You can have the branding, you can have the imaging, but I think at the end of the day, you know, what your audience and what your fans want to see is really good music and something that they could truly relate to. So, you know, over this entire pandemic, as much as, you know, things haven't gone as we thought they were going to, Mm -hmm. it's allowed me to write a ton. I'm doing a ton of co-writes with a lot of amazing writers uh, and different uh, artists. And even on the acting and modeling side, it's been a lot of auditions um, and stuff like that as that continues to pick up. So I guess in a nutshell, yeah, just really a blessing in disguise and working on a lot of new music. Um, because for me, I think in terms of next year, I'm hoping that there's a, a, a nice resurgence and people are just super hungry for live music and entertainment, which I really think will happen. 
Um, so basically putting together a really strong live show, of a lot of original music is kind of that plan, that six to you know seven month plan. Good, good. And you've, you still seem like you've got things happening, even if they're not happening, you're very active on TikTok. You've, you've got yes. up to date content on your Instagram. Uh, what's TikTok doing for you that maybe other <laughs> platforms isn't? I can't explain it. I know we've had this conversation, um, but I, I don't understand it fully, but I like the platform in terms of the audience that is able to see it. And it's really helped me in terms of reaching new fans in a way that I don't think other platforms would like Instagram, um, even Facebook. Facebook is a lot of, I think of a lot of friends and family, which is great, great for messaging and stuff like that and building businesses through that. But I think in terms of, new audience tiktok is a platform that should be discovered um, by different artists i've had friends that have actually blown up as artists through tiktok and you don't know what's going to hit and not hit there's some posts that you could spend hours on and it gets no views no likes no comments and there's other ones that you just throw up there and they automatically blow up so i think for tiktok for me it's just been about being able to you know, get a ton of content out there. It's really raw. You know, I post a lot of, you know, little clips about original songs that I've written that I haven't released yet to see what people think. Um, and it reaches audience all over. I mean, it's not just centrally located. You're reaching people all over. So that's been really cool for me. What I really respect about you, Mike, is how you're able to take yourself and your abilities, your talents and skills, and you're able to market, you're able to present yourself, you're able to go online, uh, take photos uh, while working with people, doing a, the great things that you do. And you're not taking away from the integrity of who you are. What do I mean is we all know, and it, it's, it's ridiculous, you post nude, naked, half naked, shirtless photos, you know, people are going to get thirsty over all that content. <laughs> you don't cheapen yourself. And even though like the one post that you had on TikTok, it got over 11.7 thousand views or likes, um, you're still able to bring yourself in and make yourself more than just a physical body or more than just a good looking man. Cause you really are the entire package. You, you have I really appreciate that. Yeah. You're, it's true. You're able to model, sing, produce, create, and many people can do that. But the way that you do it in a way that you don't porn or pimp or cheapen yourself, it's unheard of in today and age. Because most guys that I may have seen online or, you know, you have your own unique look, Mike, but they're quick to go to let's go in a half naked mode and post videos and photos. You don't do that. You're like, no, this is who I am. Yes. You know, I got a great physique, but you stay true to yourself and stay true to your talent. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I mean, I mean, am I getting that correct? Oh yeah. hundred percent. I, I, I thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Cause it's, uh, for me, I agree with you. You do see a lot of that online. And at the end of the day, I'm not trying to please everyone. I'm just looking for that, you know, 1% that just really relates to me and my story. And the rest, you can have many likes, but I'm concerned about, you know, creating my story, not somebody else's. So that's just the way I've been. That's the way I'm always going to be. Um, and it's not going to change. And it works. And it works for it you and people are going to know how to approach you in a way that there should not be any miscommunication of exactly what you want, what you require and demand for yourself and really the standards that you set for yourself, even though you have very much an open mind, the standards are there and there's no miscommunication that uh, there's a level that you demand and you want and it should be respected. For sure. So we're going to go into a live play of 3 a.m. You want to give awesome. a up-to-date story about that before we play the full version on Power 98.5? 
Yeah, so 3 a.m. Um, was brought to me by my producers, um, Mark Schroer and Eric, Eric Fintelman, and they've been a joy to work with, you know, throughout this entire process. Uh, I had talked to a bunch of different um, producers, and when I first spoken to Mark, um, he just really hopped on board with my story and who I was. So he had, you know, I have a lot of songs that I've written myself, but we always want to get out good music, and we came across this one song written by Robin Adelini, who's a friend of mine a very talented artist herself. And it instantly resonated with me, but I further to that thought it would resonate with a ton of people, which it really has. And it's just about, you know, calling that person, whether it's an ex or maybe the one that got away, you know, in the middle of the night and you're not drunk, but you just want to see, you know, how are they doing? Do they still care about you? And, you know, maybe you still care about them. And I think that I've since releasing this, there's a lot of people that reach out and say, Hey, you know what, this is helping me get through, a really tough time or you know what hearing this song it's allowed me to kind of move past things and it's it's really just a vibe um and i think that's kind of the best part of all of it is that you know 3am really just relates to people because everybody goes through relationships everybody goes through breakups and there's a lot of great memories and a lot of you know tough memories that this song i think really elevates 3am by mr mike whiteside Mike. Thank you. I like that song a lot. Every time I hear it, I like it a little bit more. <laughs> I had muted myself and forgot I muted myself in order to play the song. I'm like, Mike, Mike. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> That's okay. I could have taken the show away for you there. I would have, I would have kept going. No worries. <laughs> Please do. 
I enjoy it. Well, I, I already told you, and I'm going to let everyone know, I already uh, offered Mike to come in as a spot to be a co-host in, in the future on a show. Definitely would like to find someone that would be really of interest for you to, you know, possibly share your skills, share some knowledge and, uh, you know, bring, bring to the table, you know, insight and, uh, you know, who knows, it could lead to a collaboration or something. You never know. For sure. I'd, I'd love to, I'd be honored. So what, uh, how does it feel to hear that live? You know, I'd like to say that it's, it surprises me every time I hear it, but truthfully, I, I f- almost feel without getting too far in depth, I've already seen these things in my head in terms of like, I've set goals for myself that I, I want to achieve. And I think if you want to achieve certain things and you really have to see it in your mind first. So while I love hearing it and seeing it, to me, it brings me a sense of calm, if that makes sense, because uh, you know what, I just know I'm continuing onto that path. I have that final that goal that continually, you know, moves, but I'm not worried about the outcome and the process that, you know, is going to take to get there. So love to hear it at the same time. um, Just every time I hear it, I want to keep hearing it more. So it's, it's a lot of fun. All right. Now we're going to go into some quick goodies. Uh, Let's go behind the curtain. (laughs) <laughs> what would you say if I asked you, what is it that you're ready to share about yourself that no one knows about you, but you're ready hmm. to spill the tea? I don't know, but what, point me in the direction of what you're leaning towards. Anything when it comes to passion, who you want to work with, uh, a collaboration, anything yeah. that you've got inside of you that you're like, you know what, I want to put this out into the universe. I want to get this off my chest. What is yeah. it? Um, you know, for me, a source of inspiration has always been Kenny Chesney. Um, and kind of where this all started, if you see actually in the, uh, the press kit that you shared with everybody, um, kind of the catalyst behind this all was me going to a Kenny Chesney concert with actually my ex and, and her parents. And they looked at me and just said, you need to be doing this. And flash forward to the first time I actually saw it playing on radio is right before Kenny Chesney's song. So he's always been an inspiration in terms of when I see his live shows, the energy that he brings and how he just sucks the fans in. Um, he's always somebody I've admired and somebody I'd like to, you know, truthfully open up for him one day. I hope that happens for you. I really do. I believe it Thank can. You. You've got some good representation out there in, in uh, Canada. Uh, definitely, it seems like he's, it looks like you're constantly working, constantly got some type of project going on. So Yes, yes. There's lots of new music in the works. So I'm, uh, I'm very confident that what's coming out next is going to be even better than what's already out there. So it's, as I said, it's, it's very early on, but, you know, the ceiling is so high. So I'm super excited for, you know, what the future actually does hold. Are you looking to come here in the States to perform at all? Or are you planning to work in your backyard, you know, do your thing in Canada, build up the momentum more out there before coming here? No, I will go anywhere. Is that something you've talked with your representatives about or anyone about? So I'm actually only represented on the acting and modeling side. I'm completely independent on the music side. Um, and that's outside of the contract. So I, in terms of music, mm-hmm. I have free reign as of now until I actually do bring on management, if that's the case and, and whatnot. How often do you have acting or projects with acting happening? Currently, um, it varies. I mean, I'd be lying to you if I said that it was super active all the time, auditioning, you know, quite frequently every single week, multiple times a week. Um, but the jobs are still not where they were, if that makes sense. Because even up here, we're still experiencing the same thing. You know, budgets for different productions and, and whatnot uh, are definitely not where they were. Mm. And it's yeah. just like live shows, right? Like musicians are facing the same thing uh, everywhere. So it, it is what it is. But, you know, as I mentioned before, it's a blessing in disguise because there's a lot of really good music that's coming out. In your area, Mike, 
Is there a little bit more leniency when it comes to public performances, maybe cafe performances, restaurant performances? I'm assuming venues are still closed. Yeah, I think we're actually even a little bit more strict up here than um, you guys are down in the States. Truthfully, I think we're 25 people tops outside. Sorry about that. No worries. I think I think we're about 25 people outside limit and then 10 people inside. So it's, um, you know, especially for musicians where that's their primary gig. I know there's a lot of people that have, you know, really been struggling. So I'm just hopeful that it all, you know, comes together and there's a, a massive resurgence of people wanting to see live music, hopefully, you know, in the spring and summer of next year. Any closing thoughts or, you know what, I'm going to honestly say that big boom that accidentally happened because <laughs> it's usually <laughs> my, my, um, my going out, uh, music. I'm, I, I'm feeling any energy. It's, it's, it's going to be with a big bang for someone like you. You don't need to wait for anyone, uh, to tell you or to give you the green light to go continue to resource, continue to connect, continue to reach out to people. I honestly believe, especially with how genius so many musicians are and thinking of what can we do? Uh, there was a musician I came across about a couple days ago. He's doing something along the lines of, um, uh, uh, curbside music, a curbside something like people in your industry, musicians are really ingenious of thinking, how can I go live? What can I do in my community? What can I do in my neighborhood? I, I really encourage you to, to find ways of figuring out where can you be in a public performance or how can you do mm -hmm. a public performance? So if I could interject real quick, uh, maybe a little bit of a drop, but through the TikTok, I actually have been going live quite frequently. Um, so if people want to follow me on Mike Whiteside Music on TikTok, it's basically my handle for everything, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, that's been a way where I've been really able to, A, you know, keep going, get the practice in. And for whatever reason, the algorithm allows you as a musician to reach new people um, in a live format, even though you're behind a screen. So that for me has been kind of a way where I've been able to, to get that fix almost, um, and be able to still play songs and, you know, try out new material and stuff like that through the live forum there. Okay. Have you been doing Instagram at all, or has that worked for you or I, you know what I've seen through the TikTok growth, uh, an uptick in Instagram followers, but my, for whatever reason, my main, as you said, I have kind of dove deep into the TikTok um, and just kind of seeing what it's all about. Where can everyone find you on top of the TikTok and, and even recap your TikTok handle, Mike? Of course. Yeah, it's Mike Whiteside Music on everything. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Spotify, Apple, or whatever streaming platform you listen to, you can find me at Mike Whiteside. Thank you, Mike, for being with us here today on Power 98.5, live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Stay on the line, everyone. 3 a.m., Mike Whiteside. Google him. Add him to your playlist. He's on Spotify. He's on Apple Music. You're all over the place, Mike, right? All over, yeah. All over. <laughs> and basically, what's your favorite streaming platform? You can find me. <laughs> exactly. Mine's Apple Music, so I knew right Love where it. to go. Awesome. Uh, any uh, shout-outs you want to give? Um, you know, a big blanket just to my entire support system from producers to family, friends, girlfriend, everything in between, like, um, without them, um, you know, it's tough because there's a lot of time on your hands in terms of, you know, you're basically building a business. So truthfully, the support system, I'd like to give them a big shout out. I hope you and everyone have a fantastic day. I know your team is going to grow. You are doing, once again, as I told you before we went live, everything the right way. And the number one most important tool in your toolbox that every musician should know and understand where I'm very impressed with Mike is when someone gives you the time and day to say, I want to do a write up on you. I want to do a live interview with you. I want you to come live on TV. What Mike did is he made sure he got those shout outs. He got that blast out everywhere. When someone approaches you, take it as a key point of business.
from Mr. Mike Whiteside. Follow up, share, don't just rely on that platform because we cannot make you famous. You need to help yourself to make yourself famous and work with the people and help with the collaboration on getting those shares and those posts out there because once again, it's all about status. And if you're only focusing and thinking, well, one side is going to make my status you know, the next Nick Jonas or Sean Mendez doesn't work that way. You got to put in a work. It can't be to where you're just singing and producing or creating the music. You've got to be your own business person at the same time. Would you agree? I agree wholeheartedly. Thank you, everyone. Once again, Mike Whiteside. Socials and let's connect.